Entertainment, news, and politics. It's all right here with Michelle Meow. Welcome back to Swirl Radio, your A through Z, covering the LGBT, LMNOP, and everyone in between show. I'm Michelle Miao, your host. We are here every Wednesday evening at 6 o'clock Pacific Standard Time via tradiov.com. And you can you can friend us, actually. You can find us on Facebook. I know. Who doesn't have a Facebook these days? But search Swirl Radio. We're continuing our conversation with Walter Nagel, who was uh, the partner of Bayard. Uh, Rustin, and who he was an important key figure in the civil rights uh, movement and also the organizer of the March of, on Washington in 1963. Walter, we spoke a whole lot about uh, Bayard and his work, but I'd love, I'd love to know, how did you guys meet, what happened, and how did the relationship sparkle? Well, um, I should, I should uh, indicate that this is what I guess what people call a spoiler alert. I mean, the, <laughs> the circumstances of our meeting are, are in the film. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was really very, very much by chance in Times Square. We were both uh, on the same corner waiting for a life, light to change, and lightning struck, I guess you could say. Um, we started talking, and um, we never stopped. We didn't stop talking for about 10 years. Um, and I think yeah, in, in so, the documentary, uh, you, you were even very... Uh, you know, honest about it. I mean, you're 25 years old, and uh, Bayard was 65. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I was about 27. 27. But, I'm um, sorry. Yeah, I mean, there was there there was a considerable age difference. Um, I, I I think you could kind of say that we were sort of challenging three sort of taboos, if you will. I mean, we were gay, we were interracial, and there was a generational, you know, or a couple of generational differences in our age, and so we were sort of um, attacking three different taboos, but um, <coughs> it was easy. I mean, we, we loved each other very much, and um, we, did, we just didn't think about those differences, really. Um, you know, every once in a while they might crop up in, in, in the course of the relationship, but it was never anything that interfered with our moving forward or, or set up any kind of a barrier to our happiness, nothing like that. You know, in the documentary, definitely he. Sure, we've known of of many, you know, civil rights activists and he, human rights activists and activists in general and great people out there. Um, but Bayard seems to be this um, again. Extraordinary is is definitely an understatement. He's intelligent. He's kind. He's caring. Um, you know, in, I mean, he he a musician. What wasn't he? I mean, what are some things that maybe didn't get included in the documentary about Bayard that we don't know? Well, I think um, some of his uh, some of his humor and some of his um, ability to kind of just relax and be uh, be open and friendly that that kind of comes out towards the end um, when he's when he's talking about the. Uh, being on Nixon's enemies list, and when you see him in the refugee camp with the kids. But, you know, the first part of the film, a lot of it, you know, he's standing there kind of shouting and pointing his finger, and, you know, he, come, he kind of comes across as pretty fierce. And so, uh, but, but people that knew him, um, you know, he was. He, he, he was able to be that way when he needed to be, and he was militant, but in a nonviolent fashion. But in his personal life and with his friends and his uh, people he worked with, he was very loving and very relaxed and, hum- you know, had a great sense of humor. Um, he was a great collector. He had a very uh, good antique collection, uh, specializing. A-, a lot of it had to do with uh, Western European religious art, but he also had a very nice African art collection, a walking stick collection. Uh, yeah. he-, he collected things from various parts of the world, you know, to which he traveled. So he was interested in, in not only fine art, but also crafts that, uh, you know, people did in, in their native countries. And so um, <coughs> he was very well-versed in, 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 in the arts and certainly in literature. Do you think that if Bayard was here with us today and, um, you know, all the work that we've done with gay, you know, equal rights, Don't Ask, Don't Tell has been repealed, uh, marriage equality is moving forward, do you think that we would be at a at a different you know place? Would we be further in the movement, or just about where we are, or behind? What do you think? If he were still if, with us, yeah. Or? If he was still with us today, and you know, being the extreme activist that he is, he obviously um, got a lot done in his lifetime. And I know that you know, in the seventies and eighties, he, he obviously ended with you know doing uh, some of the you know 
equal rights, or I'm mm-hmm. sorry, the, yeah. yeah, moving towards gay, lesbian LGBT, rights. Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, I think um, I think it would be very surprised at how quickly the progress has been made. Um, you know, part of that has to do with just the nature of the age we live in and then the way communications have progressed and technology. Uh, you know, that speeds, kind of speeds everything up. And so the kind of work that he was doing, um, you know, from his high school years on, you know, it, you know, it took decades to really accomplish what seemed to kind of happen overnight in the 60s with the African-American community, but that was really building for decades. And so I think that um, he would really be surprised and delighted at how quickly uh, LGBT folks have, um, you know, organized and, and gotten out there and, uh, and fought for their rights and achieved, you know, a great, many, a great deal of things, a great many things. Um, <coughs> there certainly is a way to go course, um, but I think he would be very happy with where we are, and I think um, a lot of where we has to, go, I think a, a, a lot of where we still need to go probably has to do with some, some time. People need to adjust, people need to let things kind of settle in and um, educate, you know, our families and, our, and uh, the community at large about who we are and what we stand for, and, you know, and I think... Um, that the final barriers would just kind of, you know, fall to the wayside over time. So I read somewhere um, that you haven't really had another serious relationship since Byard. Um, is that true? Yes. So you s- still love him, still in love, still he's still very much a part of your life? Oh, well, I don't know about that. I mean, he is very much a part of my life, but not in the, um, obviously, in, in the real sense. Um, right. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I haven't, um, I don't think I've closed myself off to the, uh, the possibility of having another relationship. It just, you know, just hasn't happened. We're running out of time, and I wish that, you know, we can sit here all night long and ask you questions about Bayard just because, uh, I mean, wow, I, if you've just been watching in the last 10 minutes, you can tell if you didn't know Bayard, um, this is a person who's the fabric of our of our history and, and a very amazing man. Um, so, Walter, I thank you so much for joining us here tonight and giving us a piece of you, a piece of, of Bayard. Um, and if people wanted to find out more information and support, I think you can get the DVD. Uh, just head to Rustin.org. You can visit the Rustin.org website. Uh, there's a calendar on the website about things that are happening. You know, this is the 50th anniversary year of the march, and so there are people out there that are showing the film and there was a book that came out last year called I Must Resist, the collection of Bard's letters. There's still book signings that are happening. So over the course of the next, you know, the next year, um, there will be a lot of things going on relating to Bard. There's an exhibit that just opened uh, recently at the American History Museum in Washington, part of the Smithsonian, about the, 50, about the March on Washington. And Bard is featured very uh, heavily in that exhibit. So... I think, you know, as we move towards celebrating the uh, 50th anniversary, people will be hearing a lot more about him. Walter, thank you so much again. And, of course, you can check out the documentary that we've been talking about all night long um, that's uh, on Netflix if you're a member, and that's called Brother Outside. We will be right back. It is now time for celebrating your families.